I'm Lance Lysowski, the Sabres beat writer for the Buffalo News here in the Dallas area. I'm actually in my brother's home office, so you can pardon some of the Pittsburgh Penguins memorabilia that I'm sure some, some people might scope out here. I am in Texas for the Sabres game against the Dallas Stars on Tuesday night. The solar eclipse just reached totality, so I was just outside checking that out, getting a little bit of video Wrapped up a mailbag, which I'm sure at this point you have seen because it'll be attached to this video and vice versa. And for now on, whenever I do a Sabres mailbag, which will become hopefully more frequent in the off season, as um, which will be nearing here shortly, <laughs> sooner rather than later, I'd like to do a video to accompany one of those, answering one question, maybe uh, an opportunity to build off of of one that you see in the printed or the online version of the mailbag, uh, an opportunity to give more context, uh, say more. Uh, you can only, uh, I don't wanna make my replies too long when you're writing these in print. So this is hey, an expanded thought. And the one question I got that really stood out to me and I, I received it in multiple forms is the Sabres plan at center for next season now that Casey Middlestad has been traded. You know, and there's been a few branches, a few a few thoughts that people had that really go off of this idea, whether it be what is Peyton Krebs' future with the organization? You know, should Dylan Cousins be shifted to the wing given some of his struggles this season? So really, let's focus on, all right, are the Sabres going to do anything at center this offseason? Yes, I do believe that that is at the top of their shopping list going into the summer. Uh, Kevin Adams made that abundantly clear after the trade deadline. And this is a, something that I think he had his eyes on even before he moved Casey Middlestad, given Middlestad's contract situation. Now, one question I got that I did answer in the printed version is, do you think that they'll get a second line center and shift Cousins to the wing? Dylan Cousins is not going to be shifted to the wing. He is a center. I think that that is where his development needs to be. Just moving him off to the wing is a really abrupt, a reactionary decision. When we saw last season, we've seen throughout point, at points throughout this season, he can play there. He can thrive there. He could be a solution there in your top six. Does he need to improve his defense? Yes. Does he need to improve his defense while also still being the, the scoring threat that we saw at a, on a consistent basis last season? Absolutely. But you're not going to get that development headed in the right direction if you automatically move into the wing. That's not the solution. Now, they don't need to go and get a second line center. The Sabres need to go get a center who can play on the second line, who can play on the third line, and who can play on the fourth line, depending on your needs, right? And yet you think across the league at how much it costs to go get a player like this. It's not cheap. It's not cheap. You're not going to see the Sabres go the free agency route to address this need for their roster. I don't see them doing much in free agency at all unless they can convince a, a checking line player to sign a short-term deal, unless they can, you know, I see them going out and getting a starting goalie for Rochester next season since the plan is UPL and Levi as the Tandem in Buffalo. Minor signings, depth signings, but not anything of significance. Um... I see them going the trade route, which has been the more beneficial way to go about adding to this roster, especially when you're in the middle of a 13-year playoff drought where good luck convincing anybody to come to Buffalo unless you overpay. And the Sabres didn't want to overpay for Casey Middlestad, even though he was their leading point getter and, I mean, arguably their best forward over the previous 14 months. I don't see them wanting to go that route to add somebody who's even older <laughs> And further along, maybe even past their prime at this point. So Scott Lawton of the Philadelphia Flyers is a good example of the type of player I can see them adding. Now, Scott Lawton ideally is not a second line center. Can he play there when you're in a pinch? If you have injuries, absolutely. He's doing it for the Flyers right now. And he's not the reason why they're losing a bunch as of late. Their decor and their goaltending are why that team has really sunk and looks like they're going to miss the playoffs. No, Scott Lawton is somebody who can who scores double-digit goals almost every season. He plays a heavier game. He adds abrasiveness. He can kill penalties. He can win face-offs. This is the type of player you need. And when you're thinking about, okay, 
how can you build a winning lineup? You need versatility. You need versatility. You need guys who can play up in your lineup. You need guys who can play down in your lineup. Let's say, for example, they add somebody like Scott Lawton and you get an injury to some, whether it be Tage Thompson or Dylan Cousins at the start of next season. You need somebody who can play up in the lineup. You need somebody who can play more minutes, who can play, who can shoulder more responsibility. And you look internally. I know that there's going to be a lot of talk about prospects, especially as we go through the, the Calder Cup playoffs. Of course, the the Rochester Americans look like they're going to qualify again, not only qualify again, but potentially be as high as the second seed. You're going to hear a lot about Yuri Kuli. You're going to hear a lot about Issa Krozan. You're probably going to start hearing about Matt Savoy and Noah Oslin as well, because once their seasons end in the Western Hockey League and the Swedish Hockey League, they will join the Amherst if the Amherst are still going. I don't think any of those players can be counted on as a solution in Buffalo next season, particularly at center. I think Matt Savoy can help you on the wing. I think Yuri Kulik can help you on the wing. Noah Osland, I think regardless, needs time in the American League. And not only from a, not even from a hockey perspective, he just needs time to physically develop. He's still too small. I don't really see a guy at his size and strength at this point in his development arc being ready to play that position in the NHL. I think it's a lot easier to bring somebody up. And I, I think longer term, Kulik and Savoy are going to be centers. Or, or they're going to be winners, excuse me. They're not going to be centers. So you're looking at your options here. Now, I, they're not giving up on Peyton Krebs quite yet. I don't see that happening. They just lost Middlestad. This coaching staff, whether it's Don Granato leading the way or somebody else, needs to get Peyton Krebs to move past where he's at right now. He seems to have plateaued. That's just my opinion. You know, we saw how great he was in that checking line role last year, and it shouldn't get lost that Krebs, Kyle Poso, and Zemkis Gergensens were a shutdown defensive line last season. Kevin Adams was not wrong in bringing back Kyle Poso and Zemkis Gergensens, and I don't think that's why this has all gone awry. I think one of the reasons this has gone awry is because they didn't have enough scoring up front when they lost Jack Quinn. You know, losing a 22-year-old second-year winger shouldn't have been as crushing as it was for Buffalo. Just they didn't have anything else to lean on. You know, you got Jordan Greenway playing in the top six. I love Zach Benson as a player, and I think he's going to be a really good NHLer, but you can't count on an 18-year-old drafted 13th overall to be an important source of secondary scoring. And it's we've seen the last six months or so that he wasn't. You know, he did a lot of great things. I think it's going to be fantastic for his development, but this is about results right now. And to go ahead and add more talent to your roster and losing somebody like Krebs, who I really like, where I, there's so much to like about his game defensively when he's on. Winning, I think he's going to be a good faceoff man in the National Hockey League. What I want this coaching staff to do is push him t to do more. I think they kept him on that fourth line for so long that whether it's he needs to shift his mentality, Whatever it may be, get more comfortable going back to being that guy who scores. It just hasn't happened. Go push him to do more. He, of course, like it's only natural when you have more prospects inching close to the NHL, put vying for spots. Eventually, Krebs is going to run out of time. We haven't reached that point yet. I think they need to try to get him to do more next season. I think he'll benefit from having more. Let's see, like add complimentary wingers, guys who can play on his wings. I, Jeff Skinner's a really effective five-on-five -five goal scorer. The numbers bear that out since he entered the league. But when you're on Jeff Skinner's line, you got to compensate defensively for what he's not giving you. You know, he's not doing anything on the forecheck to help Peyton Krebs get the puck. So, like, I just don't think that that setup's going to work in the future. Let's see how they plan to use their personnel. Keep Krebs. Keep Cousins. You've got Tage Thompson. You add somebody like Scott Lawton in your lineup, it makes you better top the top from top to down. You, it gives you more options. You know what happens? You have an injury. Are you are you set for that? Because you know after that trade was made, Casey Middlestad to the Colorado Avalanche for Bo Byram, we heard Kevin Adams say this made our team better now into the future. That was false. That was a false assertion. I don't think that was remotely accurate. And it shouldn't have been portrayed as, as as accurate. I think that there should have been more honesty. You know, whether it's, hey, if Kevin Adams believed that, that's fine. So maybe I shouldn't say honesty. But I think there should have been some couching there to say, hey, look, we're bringing in a young defenseman who only has two more games played in the NHL than Owen Power, if you don't count the playoffs. And he's going to go through some some ups and downs as he adjusts to a new system, new personnel around him. 
and being on a new team. They have a lot of left shot D. How's this going to work? Mix, mixing and matching at this stage of the season, it's challenging. And there should have been, I think the messaging surrounding that trade should have been better and say, hey, listen, like this is going to give us, this is going to be a hit for us up front. We love Bo Byram. It's a great move for us long term, which it is. It is. But it left them very, very thin up front. Raises questions about what this team's going to look like moving forward because you take his Casey Middlestad out, giant hole. And good luck, like, you know, we're talking about the co the coaching staff, their future. Should Don Granado be back? Well, it's also challenging to evaluate your head coach when you saddled him with a lesser roster the last few weeks of the season. You know, and again, I understand the reason for the move, but it doesn't change the fact that you're you're thin down the middle because of it. And now you got to figure out how you're going to add Scott Lawton. You know, they're not going to pay for somebody like Nazem Kadri who has a lot of money left due. So. And then you have to think about no trade clauses, no tr you know, no movement clauses. Who's going to want to come play in Buffalo? Who are you comfortable bringing in? You know, who's your head? Like, I don't, if they change coaches, the system's going to be relatively the same. The style of play is going to be relatively the same because that fits their strengths. So who are you bringing in that also fits your strengths, but gives you something that you're lacking? Because the one thing, well, one of the challenges of having a young team is young players don't have roles yet. They're too young. They're too inexperienced. They don't know what the roles are going to be. You're thinking off into the, this guy could become this. You're looking out from the future. Whereas you look at somebody like Tage Thompson, he knows his role. He knows the expectations. Alex Tuck knows the role, knows the expectations. He's not thinking about what he's going to become. He's thinking about what he is now. Now he can prove in that specific role. So bringing in somebody at that part, that stage of their career, that part of their career arc would be extremely beneficial. And I do expect the Sabres to use not only their cap space, but their prospects and draft capital to get that done. I'm Lance Lysowski of the Buffalo News. Thanks again.